industry I know in the market right now. Is a, which one does Wurtz carry? I know they carry one. Wurtz carries a Bois. Yeah. Um, we have a house. Yeah. Also. And uh, the Nova Fogo is carried by Pacific Edge. Pacific yeah, Edge, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which that one? Nova Fogo's. Yeah. With the, the shit. Yeah. You know, for comparison to what we have. By the way, let me tell you we what we're all doing here. I apologize yeah. to, to is stop it coming in. I rushed it on you too quickly. No, no, that's okay. No, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. What we're doing right here is we're doing a classic cocktail comparison. Now, testing the viability mm-hmm. as aged cachaça as a variant to other aged spirits. The first one up top is going to be our Manhattan using rye on the left. It's going to be Jim Beam rye. And the one on the right is going to be using a cachaça aged in sassafras wood, Cascada Juminas. You can't break that. The cascada, the, we don't have it here, right, on the pipe? Yeah, it's, it's here. It might still be in the, the room. Okay, yeah. Stacey's going to grab it. If not, I'll find it by the So, yeah. This is another favorite of mine. It's the sassafras wood that they have. It's very s- similar to the one in the United States. And it has some really unique... A um, little bit of camphorish. Yeah, it's... Is it? The... Let me see here. The cascada geminas. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Try the rye. it. Yep. The rye is on the left. Um, it's up top. Yeah, sorry. The sidecars are second, but we'll get to those. Mm-hmm. You can finally go max out. Max is like, ah, oh, finally we're having whiskey. Okay. So the one we're trying right now, the classic Manhattan made with Jim Beam rye. The one on the right is going to be cascada geminas, which is sassafras wood. And also, give it to you. And that is age. Is there anything else in the Manhattan other than Jim Beam? Oh yeah, there's uh, and these these recipes are from the Compendium. Okay. okay. Um, but it's just a dash of Angle and an ounce of uh, Dolan Rouge. So there's Dolan. Okay. Yeah, Dolan Rouge. So we're going with a European uh, sweet. And this one has the one on the right. The Cachaça variant is going to use sassafras wood. And what is uh, what the, else is in the? Same res- same recipes. Same recipe. The only variant is the the, the base spirit. So it's going to be the base uh, Jimmy Rye versus the Cascada Jimenez. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that I would ever confuse the Cachaca Manhattan as a Manhattan. Yeah, I agree. And I I kind of went for that. I was kind of going for similarities. Um, the sassafras by itself, you can, get untr- you can try it by yourself too, by itself if you want. Um, the sassafras uh, has a deep gold color, fragrant honey, aromas, and sweetness foliated body, and a long finish. One of my favorites too. It's a really unique, unique uh, product. I should try it then. Is the one you're looking at? Let me uh, critique the, the cocktail. Sure. It just, there's no body to it, mm-hmm. and it's flat. Mm-hmm. Absolutely flat. There's no no depth. Has this been stirred? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you pass me the bottle? Or? It's uh. It's nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I think uh, this Manhattan, I mean, I would see more if you were try to compare this one with the gin martini. Okay. Because uh, you have the Dolan botanicals from the aromatized wine, the vermouth. With this one, it seems almost a little too much. I mean, the, I know that the gin is very botanical driven too, but I think it this would go more on a, on a nice dry, bur- dry martini oh, okay. Interesting. in view of gin yeah but you can get the same rice spiciness mm-hmm. uh, to interplay with the vermouth mm-hmm. uh, okay. okay next one uh, is gonna be the oh any other comments about the Manhattan uh, no. Okay. All right. So next is going to be the sidecar. Uh, this time we're going to be comparing uh, the base spirit and the classic is going to be Hennessy VS. Okay. 
The Cachaça variant is going to use um, Sabor de Caña. Sabor de Caña uses, it's aged in Jacachiba Rosa. Actually, uh, Jacachiba Rosa. So there's different uh, varieties of Jacachiba. It's the biggest tree in the Amazon. Some are estimated to be 3,000 years old. Um, the the Sabor de Caña is aged, it's stored in Jacati Bajosa for a year and a half. It has aromas of violet and vanilla. Some smoky flavors along with a hint of green apple like acidity. What happened to Cabana Cachaça? I don't know. I know the money. <laughs> I, I, never, I never tried it myself, so. No? Yeah. It's scary, right? Now that's an interesting drink. Again, I don't I, to say it's a sidecar. You know, it falls into that family of the New Orleans mm -hmm. sour. So to me, it's more of a white lady. Yeah, it yeah, plays yeah, yeah. nice in that family, yeah. like I said. But but a margarita ish. Yeah. And the Jaca Chivarosa had the highest amount of vanilla, and even more than than yeah. oak. So you might. It's uh, very comparable to you know that's why I picked it. It's very close to like a, it's a, 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 to, a cool, a cool yeah. twist on a daiquiri. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I think it's yeah. a little bold to compare. This I really to, uh, enjoy. Mm -hmm. And and to reiterate the Max comment on your first set of drinks, I think your sidecar is definitely a more torque mm -hmm. than your Manhattan. Mm. Yeah. And then we have one more coming out. It's gonna be the Mai Tai. I would, I, I really enjoy this drink. Yeah, the sidecar. Yeah. yeah, I, um, I would, I would definitely promote this highly with this. Um, Maybe it's because of the citrus too. I think the no, citrus. Not making from the sugar side. Yeah. What is the orange liqueur? Uh, in, it was uh, Cointreau. Cointreau. In both yeah. Things? The recipes, by the way, are in the book. I think that's right here. The, the left side, side next oh, to the okay. left pocket. Oh, hey, hey, Max, where'd you put that there? Well, if we, as we wait for the Mai Tai to come out, that's the last one. Can and um, this is part of uh, you just hosted your thesis and seminar combined together right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We basically let them go. So your goal in the thesis, like uh, Tony asked you, is basically for you, for you to be able to embrace and divulge the world of uh, age cachaça. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's, it has so much potential, um, and there's there's not any information about it. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the woods that there are protected? Um, are they, when these are going to be certain restriction reinforced, are we going to lose these tiles because we cannot have access to them? Let's say that the demand increases and the offer start to, you know, be penalized, just mm -hmm. like bourbon world, but at least in bourbon you have one type of yeah. oak that, uh, and you start to have over, you know, of course it's frutale, over... Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Take advantage of Woods. Yeah, well, yeah, sustainability, sustainability is an issue. Yeah. It is an issue. And uh, you know that's that's one thing that I if I ever go back to Brazil, I mean I will. <laughs> but I will be that's a, that's an issue too that should be addressed. I know sustainability is a huge issue in all the liquor world, especially with you know, shortage of agaves, you know, it takes so many years to make it. And agave and how does where do they get it from, you know, it's it's take so long to grow and they're pulling them out at a very quick rate so sustainability with the woods would be an issue all right uh, and just very quickly on the Mai Tai um, so this has this recipe has two cachaças got two different cachaças aged mm. and unaged um, so the the unaged it's for the the classic is going to use Brugal light um, extra dry and then Sierra Limpa is the unaged uh, variant. We didn't try this one neat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you try. Uh, you can try any of these neat that you like. Um, What's that? And then the age is going to be uh, rum barber port four year versus Rio G. Engenejo Oro, which uses laurel canela wood, which is a similar to cinnamon wood. So you're going to get a lot of cinnamon off this. 
this one is inside the sidecar. Really you another unique one? one. The Rio, uh, let's see, aged for two years in Laurel, has a gold color with aromas of butterscotch and apple, very pronounced cinnamon flavor all over the palate, and a fairly long finish. So getting back to the thesis. Sure. Uh, Livio mentioned, I mean, we still, I remember 10 years ago saying, is the next big thing. You know, we've got the Kuiperinha, Oshitas, it's, it's going to explode. Ten years later, still waiting for it to explode. Yeah. So, what obstacles, hurdles, struggles do you see beyond that with all these crazy woods? Yeah, I think getting the the general public to embrace it and understand it. Um, I talked to one of the producer, and he goes around to bars, and they think that amburana is some kind of oak. They know it's they know it's a. You can see it's obviously aged because it's colored. But when guests see it, they think ambiance is at some type of oak. So I think understanding the you know the bartenders understanding what each wood is and maybe a common name like Castaneja, you can't associate that with anything English. But if you say Brazilian chestnut, just something similar simple like that, then they'll be able to associate mm -hmm. what what this is. You know, oh chestnut, okay, I can I can understand what that is. It's not oak. So at least they can make that association. I think that's a big step is education um, for the bartenders. And then to be able to convey that to the guests, how, how special these are. But what do you expect from yourself being a bar manager and running a very high profile bar and you don't know anything about Shah, so your staff doesn't know as much as you do? How do you convey that message to them so they can influence the consumer? I think uh, sharing my experiences and getting them to appreciate, taste it, the stories behind it. I mean, just like every other bottle of, of liquor or liqueur, there's a story behind it. And I believe that each one of these does and getting the, the staff enthused, getting them to understand what it is behind these bottles that make them so special. And in turn, they can transfer that to the, the guests so they can increase the experience and the, and the value. Did you uh, intentionally go with, um, for the original Mai Tai, intentionally go with lighter style rums as more of a fair comparison to, you know, contrast against um, the Kachasa? I had several different age ones that I could choose from. Uh, because you're not going with a, a, a dark, which is yeah. what you use traditionally. A dark, for, yeah. For my and dark. this one's not very dark yeah, either. I think I kind of went with that. It's, it's only a year and a half, okay. so I didn't want to go too mm -hmm. right. too dark. Well, that's what I was I yeah. was asking if you intentionally yeah. went with two lighter rums in the yeah. Mai Tai mm -hmm. to, to fairly contrast against the Cachaca mm -hmm. yeah, variation. I, yeah, I definitely went with that, that route, yeah, because mm -hmm. you can see it's... If you compare us with the, the Barbon Court, which is not that dark either, no, it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. very similar in that respect. Mm. Well, I love the way the Kachasa shows on the Mai Tai. Mm -hmm. it, it adds a whole other layer of you know, flavor and complexity. Again, you know, to call these you know variations on those, I, I think they're something altogether something different. different. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and it, I'm not familiar with the the, the brand of Orjat that you're using because. Traditionally, Orja is, 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 is prominent in, even if you use a smaller quantity, mm -hmm. you guys see you use an ounce in this, mm -hmm. I'm picking up nothing really? on it. Yeah, okay. so I'm just curious to know what... what use small hands. Yeah, so it's a... They use a classic recipe for Orja and all natural ingredients. That's probably more so delicate. The, I, more I, delicate. Agree, I agree with the with Tony's statement on the Mai Tai. I, I, I actually think that you know, after, what, 10 years that the Caipirinha has been around and for whatever reason America hasn't fallen in love with it, there's a chance that this drink yeah. has a better chance at getting Americans to drink. I think it hits that nice balance of the acidity. It's very nice. Because you get the acidity mm -hmm. and it hits well with the uh, the sugar cane nuances. Yeah, it's and, and you can taste the cachaça. Yeah, yeah, you can taste there. it. But the it's finish, there. it's got a nice And then you get the oak too. Yeah. But there's also maybe also because of more of a heavier fusel oils of yeah. a, like Jamaican rum. So you're thinking of you yeah. know 
the, yeah. the very first uh, Ray Matthews. Yeah. That they have a little bit of that very bold, pungent, for sure, dunder-ish flavor, and this is kind of fits in that profile. Although it's more of the agricultural rum style, mm -hmm. but the funkiness complements. Have you had right. any older, ever experienced any older rain? I can't because they don't obviously make it no. for a long time. But the original is like the, the 17, seventeen year. I think they not, they, have the, they have a replica of that, right? Appleton so, owned by old Appleton. Appleton's yeah. the only thing they're producing is an overproof white, I think. That's that's the uh, Ray and Nephew nowadays. The overproof white? Yeah. Yeah. That's very yeah, so you're talking about that similar to this Kashasa kind yeah, of Yeah, but you know, contrasting it to what the original Mark I used. No, I had the Appleton fifteen. That's the oldest I had. But so um, does anybody have anything for Tim? I'm just, I'm fascinated with the, it was a great presentation, and I've never gone through a tasting like this. And yeah, very but, professionally but, made. Yeah, I just, I wouldn't put any wager on, on this becoming a category in my lifetime. Yeah. I mean, I I love the, you're obviously very passionate and committed yeah. to it, and but I, you know, I think back to Ron Cooper visiting me at the Bellagio in 1998, and I think we might have been the first account to bring Del Gay in. And those guys, him, Steve Olson, you know, they've created an army mm -hmm. around Mezcal. But outside of that following, most consumers, yeah. they don't know it, they don't want to drink it, they, you know, maybe yeah, have yeah. bad, and, and I just, I, I, not that I'm comparing this, yeah. although they're you know, there might be a, or Diego, when he first came with Bar Soul. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to Steve Mathis, and he's like, I I'm not touching this stuff, but if he wants to come out, and, you know, he single-handedly built that okay. category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah but, I think he, getting away from the, the Caipardinha might be a better idea, and because... They can they can create a new experience. But I don't see I, I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah. Look at Rum, how the mojito was able yeah. to be the launching pad for several rum brands. You know what happened to the mojito too, though, Francesco? It's the same thing that happened to the margarita. Yeah. It became an American product. It became it didn't become the symbol of a country anymore. We make a lot of caipirinhas in Italy, but when you make caipirinhas in Italy, what do you get? I made them on a beach, and I made them with Italians that wanted to speak Spanish and wanted to listen to Spanish music and danced while they're at the bar waiting for their drink. That's not America. It's not America. So until America Americanizes cachaça and caipirinha to their way, which is, we're kind of not very social. No, I don't know who the hell you are, so I don't want to dance with you right now. You know, let me have seven drinks and maybe I'll have, you know, until it becomes the mojito, the way it's consumed in Cuba and in most of the rest of the world, is very different than in America. In America, the mojito is almost like, oh, the mojito, just like, I'll have a, a Bud Light or I'll have mm -hmm. a, it's a different yes. drink. It's a different but look at the example DNA. of, you're talking about authenticity and cultural, cultural authenticity culture. and identity, cultural identity. But look at the Apollo Spritzer. The Apollo Spritzer is booming in uh, in you know in uh, in our in the metro areas and and people are shifting from a beer to an Apollo Spritzer or in a happy hour or if they offer from a glass of wine to so I personally think for what I've been experiencing in this country there are very very few people who can make a caipirinha and a mojito very. And the caipirinha is terrible everywhere you go. Three, four miserable pieces of lime that are like a, a, a size of a dime. Super sweet or super sour, overly shaken. Uh, they don't know how to make it. So, you know, I think it's, there's a lot. I agree with Tony, there's a, you know, light years away before this become, you know, before somebody like, Max carry 500 bottles in the back bar, like bourbon or other mm -hmm. whiskey. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, you have to do, you have to pick your, your battles and you have to pursue a certain type of clientele and consumer stream. And um, unless if there are gonna be some major change, like some major impactful 
events in Brazil.